Hi friends, this is Father Chris Golding. I'm so glad you could be with us today for midday prayer and for an introduction to contemplative prayer. It's what we're calling midweek motivation here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Baton Rouge. We have friends joining us on Zoom over here and uh, we have you joining us here on Facebook Live. It's great to be with you. There is an order of service uh, posted on the link, on the Facebook link. And uh, if you're on Zoom, you can head to stlukesbr.org. And on the front page there, there'll be a link to midweek, uh, to noonday prayer and to midweek motivation. Noonday prayer begins on page 103. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is hymn number 17 from the Episcopal Hymnal 1982. Now let us sing a praise to God with fervent heart and ready mind. Each day the sun at zenith calls the faithful to their noonday prayers. For at this hour to all the world the grace of true salvation came. The Lamb of God restored our peace by virtue of his saving cross. So dazzling is its holy light, it puts the noonday sun in shade. Then let us all with joy embrace the flaming splendor of such grace. All glory be to you, Lord Christ, who conquering death reigned gloriously with God, creator of all things, and with the Spirit comforter. Psalm 126. It's in the Book of Common Prayer on page 105. Let's read together. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. They said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. 
thanks be to God. I've chosen this short reading from Romans as our reflective scripture piece each week. There's great power in these words, I think, at this time when we are socially distancing ourselves from one another and isolating ourselves bodily, but doing our best to not isolate ourselves either spiritually or emotionally from God or from others. And for me, that's been a challenge, and I imagine that is a continuing challenge for you, particularly if you or your family members or your loved ones are facing financial challenges or challenges with anxiety or a lack of energy. Uh, Perhaps you're facing challenges with regular patterns of sleep. Um, And you may just be feeling grieved and weighed down uh, by the overwhelmingness of all of this. And so Romans uh, chapter 12, 9 to 13, it drives us, beckons us back to our central mission as Christians together. To love one another in sincerity, to hate all that is evil, particularly as we face this unseen demon in our midst, clinging to God and all that is good, and be devoted to our spiritual life more than ever. It also reminds us that we are to share with those in need, and that even if we're experiencing uh, financial constraints, we can always find perhaps in our hearts and in our budgets, uh, room for financial giving to those in need at this time. Let us continue with the prayers on page 106 in the prayer book. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Blessed Saviour, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved, for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. I invite your intercessions or thanksgivings, either silently or aloud, wherever you may be. And you may either like to post them, if you're on Zoom, into the chat function in that medium. Or if you're on Facebook Live, you may like to post your comments into this live Facebook feed. Your prayers and intercessions, thanksgivings and adorations to God. And a prayer during a time of anxiety. This is adapted from the Episcopal Peace Fellowship. Let us pray. 
Eternal God, you abide, though all things change. We are anxious and fearful, and we turn our hearts to you, looking to you and leaning on your strength. It is written, Blessed is the one whose strength is in you. Bless us now with faith and courage. Help us to feel that you are with us, steadying and sustaining us with the assurance that we are loved. Be with us and bring us hope that in the days to come our aspirations may be fulfilled for our good and the good of those we love who depend on us. Banish our fears with the sense that you are always present to uphold and sustain us. For as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, Have no fear, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the power of my righteousness. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the divine assistance remain with us and those we love this day and always. Amen. Here concludes the midday office from the Book of Common Prayer. But if you'd like to stick around for an introduction to contemplative prayer, I invite you to do so either here on Facebook Live or via Zoom. You'll find the link on the front page, the home page of the St. Luke's Episcopal Church Baton Rouge website, stlukes with an S B R dot O R G. You'll also find links on the Facebook Live post. And I invite you to join me for an introduction to contemplative prayer. If, you have, uh, if you're on a smartphone, um, you won't be able to look this app up now, but later on, if you'd like to go to the contemplative outreach page, you'll find a link to download to your iPhone or to your Android device um, a link to the Contemplative Prayer app that I'm going to use today. Good to see you, Brian and Paula. Thanks for being with us today, and thanks for sticking around. And we have someone here on Zoom. Hi, friends. Good to be with you. Thank you for joining. Contemplative prayer, of course, has been around for generations. But since the 60s and early 1970s, with the liturgical revival around the world and the growth of the ecumenical movement, it's come into the forefront of the church's prayerful imagination once again. Books like this one started to come out in the 1980s. It's Centering Prayer, Renewing an Ancient Christian Prayerful Prayer Form. I'm going to share a little bit from that in a moment. You'll also uh, might like to look up the names of John Main out of Washington, D.C., and the Contemplative Center there. You might also like to look up the name of Thomas Keating, who has been instrumental in the Contemplative Outreach Movement. Again, a link is posted on the Facebook Live feed. Contemplative prayer is a type of Christian meditation. And one of the things I hear most often about meditation is I really struggle with it because my mind wanders. And another thing I hear is sometimes people say, well, I don't feel like I'm getting anything out of it. 
writers like Pennington and Thomas Keating reassure us in what they write that over time this contemplative prayer practice will yield fruit for us. In my life I've found it turning up in the way that I'm able to deal with a crisis or a type of drama in my life or my home in a less anxious way, a more godly and present way. Thanks for joining us, Beverly. I've also found contemplative prayer feeding into my other prayer life so that when I read the scriptures during the daily office or during the Eucharist, Contemplative prayer is there somewhat in the background to enliven and quicken the Spirit of God within me as I read those lessons or I pray those prayers. And so we might not feel any result in the moment, but over time uh, we are assured in faith with the Holy Spirit's help and with our brother Jesus dwelling within us through the church and through the sacraments, we are assured that none of this time goes in vain. One of the, one of the central features of contemplative prayer, as opposed to other forms of Christian or non-Christian meditation, is the use of a Christian prayer word or phrase to center us and to ground us in our prayer. If you're beginning at this, I suggest either two things, either one word, something like prayer or love or hope, or you may like to use the Aramaic word Maranatha, which has power to it as well. Maranatha means, come Lord Jesus. There's something wonderful and enriching in speaking the words and the language which Jesus would have spoken in his everyday life. Maranatha means, come Lord Jesus. And because it's broken up into different syllables, Maranatha. It can be also practiced in time by using our breath, breathing in on ma ra and breathing out on na tha. If that's all too much for you today, don't worry about it. You may like to use that prayer word or just another simple word that speaks to you today, like peace or hope or love. You may like to use a prayer phrase in, uh, as an, uh, an alternative, rather, to a prayer word. A prayer phrase might be like the Jesus prayer, which comes to us from the Eastern part of Christianity. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Jesus prayer has two parts, a confessional part, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, and then a confessional part, a confession of who God is, and then a confession of our need uh, for God's help. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we recognize you not just as a prophet, not just as a guru, but as the living word of God incarnate through the Holy Spirit. And, Lord Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. I am imperfect, and part, as part of the larger human family, I need your help and assistance. Come to my aid. Welcome to Jim and to Paula who are joining us on Zoom and to Brian and Beverly who are on Facebook Live as among others. Thanks for being with us. I'm inviting you to enter now into a time of contemplative prayer. 
I'm going to use the contemplative prayer app on my phone. You'll be able to see that among uh, a collection of other prayer apps, perhaps. D365. D365 is another wonderful app. You might be able to see that there on Zoom. The contemplative prayer app is called Centering Prayer, and it will allow us to enter into 15 minutes of contemplative prayer. I invite you, wherever you are, to find a comfortable seating position, to rest your feet gently on the floor wherever you are. I invite you to pay attention to perhaps the tension that might be sitting in your shoulders right now and to gently uh, circle your shoulders and then relax into uh, your upper body and then start to pay attention to the energy which comes through your legs and down through your feet into your shoes and finding a sense of groundedness in the aina as we say in Hawaii the land beneath our feet which God has given to us I invite you as you're praying to close your eyes if it is safe for you to do so wherever you are and as we begin we'll have the vestibule where I'll give you the four guidelines of centering prayer from the contemplative outreach, an opening psalm, and then we'll hear the gong or the singing bowl three times, which will signal our 15 minutes entering into contemplative prayer. Throughout that contemplative prayer, I invite you when you feel distracted or whenever thoughts or feelings come up to just gently, ever so gently, invite yourself back in your own heart and mind to your contemplative prayer word or phrase. So as we sit quietly, we repeat that in our mind as a way of giving consent to God's action and presence within us. It's really important that we're gentle on ourselves, that we don't judge ourselves for going to the many thoughts and feelings that we might have and aching back or the shopping list or what I have to do this afternoon or this evening. That's all human. And so we're invited, as in the Buddhist uh, mindfulness practice, to see our thoughts as a leaf just rolling down that stream gently. We see the leaf on the stream and we let it go, but we don't hold on to it or judge it. We just simply let it be. Blessings as you enter into this time. The four guidelines of centering prayer. Choose a sacred word as the symbol of your intention to consent to God's presence and action within. Sitting comfortably and with your eyes closed, settle briefly, briefly and silently introduce the sacred word or phrase as the symbol and consent to God's presence and action within. Whenever engaged with your thoughts, which include body sensations, feelings, images, and reflections, return ever so gently to the sacred word. At the end of the prayer period, remain in silence with eyes closed for a couple of minutes. And then in that space, I'm going to read to you from Centering Prayer, Renewing an Ancient Christian Prayer Form. An excerpt from Psalm 106 
from Nan Merrill, Psalms for Praying. May we become bearers of joy, we who are invited to share in the cosmic dance. May we walk in faith all the days of our life, confident in your divine presence, even in times of trouble, and with the assurance for what is and all that is to be. May we have faith in the unfolding of our lives and radical trust in the universe.
Our Lord is an insistent lover, yet a respectful one. He does not push his way into our lives. There was an opening in the door through which the Lord thrust his hand. Even if we had not yet opened, we were at least listening. And when we listen, the Lord touches us. When he touches, his word is a two-edged sword that pierces to the very marrow of the bone. We need to listen regularly to the scriptures. It is there that the Lord touches us, rouses us, calls us forth from our settled ways to truly seek him in centering prayer. It is the scriptures, especially the gospels, that create in us the attentiveness of a loving, desiring heart. That's from M. Basil Pennington, from his 1980 book, Centering Prayer, Renewing an Ancient Christian Prayer Form. Thank you again for joining us for Noonday Prayer and or an introduction to contemplative prayer. I'm going to be in this space here in the St. Luke's Chapel for a little while longer. If you would like to interact on the chat function in Facebook Live or via Zoom, we can have some pastoral conversations and checking in if you'd like to do that. Father Brian and I are always available for the Sacrament of Reconciliation or Confession, particularly as we're heading into the season of Passion Tide and Holy Week next week. Do reach out to us. You can find details of our contact information on our website, stlukes.org. Thanks, Mary, Father Brian, Julia, Beverly, Brian B. Thanks, Jim and Mimi and Paula. Thanks to that person on your iPhone. I can't see who you are, but thank you for being here. I appreciate you praying with me today. I'm going to hold open this space until the top of the hour at one o'clock. If you'd like to stick around and chat. Otherwise, Godspeed and keep the faith. Thanks, Marianne. Good to be with you. I hope you're well, your family is well. We're praying for you all. If you have any specific prayer requests uh, that don't come to mind now, you can always reach out to Miss Becky, our pastoral care coordinator and health ministries director. You can also post uh, prayers here that are okay to be public in the live feed or on Zoom. We're going to be going live again on Zoom and Facebook Live at 9.45 a.m. this coming Sunday, Palm Sunday, for a half hour virtual coffee hour of welcome you to join us then and we'll be doing our live worship at 10 30 a.m this sunday palm sunday father brian is preaching deacon reese and i will be with you 
will be leading this service together for Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion. I do hope you'll be able to join us from 9.45 for coffee and for the service at 10.30. The hymn that we use today for noonday prayer, hymn number 17, that dates back from 1685. The music, Graduel, from 1685. It's a wonderful reminder of the prayers throughout the centuries that have been offered in faith. Our hymnal is a great resource for looking for prayers and other music to supplement your daily prayer life. There are prayers for morning and evening hymns, noonday hymns, and other canticles and the like. There are also, of course, seasonal sections in our hymnal for Lent and for Holy Week. And you might like to take some time in the hymnal to turn to the section which is entitled Jesus our Lord and spend some time in adoration of Jesus the Christ at this time. I'm thinking of those wonderful hymns like Tell Out My Soul the Greatness of the Lord, the song of Mary the Magnificat put into verse by Timothy Dudley Smith. It's a wonderful prayer of adoration, which can be appropriate even during the time of Lent. Time of Lent is contemplative and penitential, but it's also a time to remember and give thanks that the incarnate Christ is always with us, always human, always living and suffering and dying and rising with us. The other section in the hymnal which might be speaking to you, it certainly is to me, is the sections on the church's mission and Christian vocation and pilgrimage. Questions around what is our vocation? What is our discernment in this time of social distancing, in this time of COVID-19? What is our Christian vocation? Where is this pilgrimage in this stage of our life taking us? Hymn 557 reminds us that on our journey as Christians, we never stop rejoicing. We never stop giving thanks because with all the angel choirs in this life and the next, our praises continue through life's long path, chanting still goes loud, answering echoes up float like wreaths of incense in a cloud. And so by using our hymnal, by using our Book of Common Prayer and other prayers in the contemplative Christian tradition, we enter into the great cloud of witnesses praying together in this life and praying with the saints who have gone before us. Another spiritual discipline that I'm reconnecting with at this time to help ground me and give me a sense of purpose and a sense of routine is the Angelus prayer. Traditionally prayed at 6 a.m and 12 noon and 6 p.m. The Angelus prayer again is a prayer giving thanks for the incarnation. Those words, blessed are the fruit of your womb, Jesus, carry great power for me at the time where we remember that Jesus is incarnate in humanity. 
in each and every one of us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus is incarnate in those healthcare workers who are caring for the sick and the suffering. Jesus is incarnate in the people who bring the food to our table, who grow it, who farm it, who transport it, who carefully pack it and get it to us. Jesus is incarnate in the many people who are not able to socially isolate, such as truck drivers and those who are working through the night to provide our electricity and water and gasoline, even if we're not traveling very far these days. And so the Angelus reminds me that through that fruit of Mary's womb, Jesus, we find life and love and light even in the midst of dark times such as these. Final thing to say for today is that you might be called to give more time to the praying of the Psalms at this time. The translation of our Psalms in the Book of Common Prayer, or in fact any Bible, may be a source of life and comfort to you and might in fact give voice uh, to your prayer when you're not sure, sure what to say in this difficult time. The Psalms give voice to anger and frustration, to rejoicing and adoration. The Psalms give voice to intercession and thanksgiving. The Psalms give voice to happy times and to troubling times. And so, like in Psalm 85, we ask that the Lord will show us mercy and grant us salvation. We ask that we'll be able to listen to what the Lord God is saying right now, knowing that the Lord continues to speak peace to his faithful people and those who turn their hearts to him. We pray the Psalms knowing that truly the Lord's salvation is very near to those who fear him, that the Lord's glory continues to dwell in our land. We pray that mercy and truth meet together, that righteousness and peace continue to kiss each other, that truth continues to spring up from the earth, that righteousness continues to look down from heaven. And we pray that the Lord will grant us prosperity, that our land will yield increase. For righteousness shall go before, peace shall be the pathway for his feet. Thank you again for being with us for this hour of prayer, which we're calling Midday Motivation. It's time for noonday prayer, an introduction to contemplative prayer, and a time to hold open some space for you to engage and interact with one another and with your clergy. So thanks for being with us today. Blessings this afternoon. I hope you're able to get some sun sunshine on this beautiful day. And I pray that wherever you are and whatever you're called to do right now, that you may know the presence of the living God who dwells in word and in light, that you may know the peace which passes all understanding 
and that you may find the courage to meet the days ahead. So go with God and keep the faith.